Hello everyone, this is DA from E Academy and this video is about the third method of the strong form that is the least square method one of the method that we will be using in the weighted residual method as well so far we have seen two methods the first one was petrov galerkin method and the second one was galerkin method that what were the two main assumptions that uh, these two methods were assuming while solving any differential equation with given boundary conditions and we have solved an example related to petrov galerkin as well as galerkin method and in the in one of the previous videos we have talked about how these four methods that this is the third method and the fourth method that we will be discussing in the upcoming videos about the co-location method so this is so this video here is about the least square method how we can solve the same differential equation i and i am not changing the main differential equation the boundary conditions in every in every method because it will be easier to understand which method is more applicable uh, for you in every situation or in a certain situation because four methods are here it's up to you according to the situation according to the problem that which method is most optimized in your case uh, to actually approximate the differential equation okay with the given boundary conditions here we are with the least square method we have seen Two different assumptions in the two different videos about Petrov and Galerkin. Here in the least square method, the main assumption is about the weight function. So every weight function is actually the partial derivative of the residual with respect to the constant term that we have in our residual. It depends on how type of node we have and how many nodes we have. So this is the main assumption in the least square method. And the condition on the shape functions are same. So there is no difference in the conditions of the shape function or the weight function as well. But difference is only here with the assumption uh, of the weight function that how we can choose the weight function. The weight function is equal to the residual of the uh, the partial derivative of residual with respect to the constant term we have. So here W1 should be equal to partial derivative of residual with respect to C1. And W2 should be partial derivative of R with C2. The remaining phi0, phi1, and phi2 are same, just as the previous video. So at this stage, when we have a residual, we plug all of those values using the definition of U, that is Cj, phi j. Here j is 2 again in this video. J is 2. I'm not. Uh, I'm not changing anything here except the main assumption of the method itself. So this is the residual derivative, second derivative of u, right, minus this whole u here plus x square. So we have to solve or we have to um, take the derivative of this thing. We have to simplify all of these things. In order to put these things and make a weighted integral statement, we have to take the derivative of r with respect to c1 for w1 and we have to take the derivative of r with respect to c2 for w2. So this is your task to simplify the residual and take the derivative of r with respect to c1 and take the derivative of r with respect to c2. I'm going to write the partial derivative of r with respect to c1 and c2. So you can verify your solved derivative uh, from here, from uh, the statement I'm going to write to verify uh, your solution. So W1, that is the partial derivative of R with respect to C1 is equal to. So this is W1, 2 minus 2x plus x squared. And by taking the derivative of R with respect to C2, that is W2 is equal to. So minus 2 plus 4x minus x squared plus 2 by 3x cubed. So this is W2 and this is W1. Now we know what is the next step. We have to plug this W1 into the weighted integral statement with R. And this W2 again 
the statement of I'm writing the statement um, here again so how we can plug the values so this is the weighted integral statement for w1 w1 or dx from uh, 0 to 1 that is the initial domain we have and the same goes for w2 we have w1 we have residual we have to take the integral over the domain of 0 to 1 and same here so if we plug all of these values in these two integrals and we take the integral and after taking the integral the solution of this and this integral would be like so these are the three equations we have and we know we have to simplify these two equations in order to get the value for c1 and c2 so, so after solving these two equations we will be having any value for c1 and c2 and the last step we know we have to plug the c1 and c2 in the approximated function u c1 phi 1 plus c2 phi 2 plus phi naught and it's up to you to simplify this as well in order to get the polynomial uh, the compact polynomial like this in the form of uh, x to the power 0 and then x to the power 1 x square and then so on so this is how we can solve any differential equation with the given boundary condition with the help of the least square method and and in the least square method we have the main assumption about the Shea function is that it is equal it is equal to the diff the derivative of the residual with, re with respect to its parameters or the constants. So the question may arise often that in a situation when we have any differential equation, we have to approximate it. So which method is most suitable in the situation? So it's according to the situation and the problem we have, because in one situation, maybe the least square method is performing very well but in the other situation the galerkin or the petrov galerkin method is performing well so it's uh, according to the situation it's according to the constraints we have and we the main purpose uh, is always to reduce the residual we have it to reduce or minimize the error term we that we are facing so here is just to see how we can solve a uh, differential equation in the strong form of the finite element method course and in the next video we will be talking about the fourth method of the strong form and then we will talk about how uh, these four methods are not actually uh, filling the need uh, while solving a differential equation so in the next video we will be solving this same example with a different method. So this is for now. If you're looking for more such videos, then you can subscribe this channel in order to watch more upcoming videos. We will meet in the next video. Till then, take care. Goodbye.